An important enabler to continue to use fossil fuels to satisfy our, our energy needs without emitting as much CO2 as we're currently emitting is what we call carbon capture, reuse, and storage. The idea behind it is that typically when you burn hydrocarbon in air, you produce combustion products that have CO2, nitrogen that came from air to start with, and water. If you condense water, then you have carbon dioxide and nitrogen. You can go through a separation process by which you can extract CO2 by itself, liquefy it, and inject it underground. This way, you prevent emission and accumulation of CO2 in, in air. Um, another twist on the same theme is you can actually take the CO2 that you produce and convert it back into fuel again using low quality energy source like solar heat for instance. Uh, the challenge in both cases is how to separate CO2 from these combustion products without uh, expending too much energy and without having to use very expensive devices. <coughs> um, uh, it turns out that separating CO2 from combustion gases can be very energy intensive. So it can degrade the efficiency of the plant significantly and can also be expensive. Uh, we have been working on technologies that, that, that promise to do that at a much lower cost and hopefully at, at, at much lower energy penalty. Um, these technologies will produce CO2, again, in the liquid form, in the form that is ready for injection, or if integrated with reuse technologies, <coughs> can convert it back into a fuel using low energy sources. Um, some of these technologies uh, have to do with, again, pressurized oxy combustion. Uh, <coughs> that's a technology that we've worked on for a number of years with industry partners. And currently, <coughs> with the Department of Energy, we're looking at a feasibility study of scaling this technology up. <coughs> Basically, when you pressurize the combustion process, you produce CO2 at pressure, and that's much easier to liquefy, which is the final product you, you, you're looking for. And so instead of burning in air to produce a mixture of CO2 and nitrogen, you just simply burn in pure oxygen. So what comes out at the tailpipe is basically <coughs> CO2 and water. We can condense water and take CO2 <coughs> and either store it underground or use it in other application. We are uh, using a very similar set of ideas for gasification that I discussed before to also gasify uh, 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 heavy hydrocarbons like coal or, or heavy oils to produce low carbon fuels. So if you compare the amount of CO2 emitted by burning coal to the amount of CO2 emitted from the synthetic gas as produced by gasification, there's a significant reduction. In the process, we can separate some of the CO2 producing gasification and store it and use the same gas as a low carbon energy source. We're also you, <coughs> working with <coughs> our colleagues in producing even better separation technologies using newer materials, membranes, oxygen carriers, metals in the form of nanoparticles and so on to enable the separation process at low, ener at low energy and uh, as, as, as much as possible at lower cost than existing separation uh, technology <coughs> to enable the oxy combustion process to happen uh, without wasting much of the energy in, in, in the original field. <coughs>